Every pilot in this room is focused on keeping flying safe and making the U.S. aviation industry, making sure it remains strong. Pilots understand, like no one else, the demands of flying passengers and cargo in increasingly complex and constantly changing airspace. Pilots recognize the skill and judgment that is needed to safeguard lives aboard aircraft and in communities and on the ground during routine flight operations, and especially in unusual or abnormal circumstances. That's why I'm pleased to announce that more than 100,000 airline pilots from across the United States are joining forces to fight a reckless bid to remove pilots from the cockpit. The blatant at attack on aviation safety comes in the form of two dangerous provisions inserted into the House FAA reauthorization bill. And I want to be clear about this. The language was not publicly debated, nor were aviation safety advocates informed in advance about this measure to push for single piloted or computer piloted cargo operations. Section 744 and Section 703 would authorize the FAA research and development program, a research and development program in support of single piloted all cargo operations utilizing remote piloting or commuter pilot, computer piloting technology. Okay, listen, that is just flat out inappropriate for the FAA to create a new research program with the express purpose of supporting technology that would not only doesn't fit with their safety mission, but would actually work against it. Let's be clear, it works against it. And make no mistake, this is not a study. Those have been done. This is not a study of this, in, in, uh, this program. It is a research and development program with no end date. This maneuver is a corporate handout, plain and simple. But it's more than that. It's a dangerous experiment that threatens the safety of our skies. And it doesn't belong in the FAA reauthorization or in any bill for that matter. As we, as we saw in the public opinion poll released yesterday, Americans are not at all comfortable with the idea of being a passenger on an airliner that is completely pilotless. In fact, they're overwhelmingly opposed to the federal government funding any research to remove pilots from the cockpit of a passenger or a cargo aircraft. It's clear that Americans share airline pilots' views from the cockpit when it comes to maintain, maintaining aviation safety. Today, the unions representing the pilots of nearly 50 commercial airlines have formed an alliance to give voice to their unified opposition. This powerful unity of alliance will be matched by our commitment to defend safety, the safety of our skies. For our part, ALPA will use every resource we have to ensure that this anti-safety provision is not, I say again, not enacted into law. I've asked Captain Bill Secor, FedEx Express, to lead ALPA's efforts with the Alliance. Sap Captain Secor has agreed to serve as my direct representative in this life-saving work, and he, is, he has the access to the full scope of ALPA's resources and staff to fight back this threat. And now I'd like to invite Captain Secor to talk about the alliance and the results of the new public opinion poll, which so clearly shows that Americans expect and, yes, demand two well-trained airline pilots in every cockpit. Bill, over to you, sir. I'd like to start by thanking Captain Canole for inviting me today to speak about this important issue. And also to thank him for uh, allowing me to represent uh, ALPA on the Alliance. So today I'd like to talk quickly about how we got here, just to, to ensure that everybody understands the issue and the process that we went through, and then uh, move on to the Alliance and, uh, more importantly, the public opinion poll that came out uh, yesterday that uh, ALPA commissioned. So how did we get here? Well, in mid-April, uh, on a Friday afternoon, the House released their version of the FAA reauthorization bill. And by Friday evening, after reading through it, we realized that Section 744 existed and what was in it. And Captain Canole did a good job of explaining it, but just to ensure that everybody understands what we're, we're talking about, I'd like to actually read it from the bill. It's very short. Section 744, single-piloted commercial cargo aircraft. Program, 
The FAA, in consultation with NASA and other relevant agencies, shall establish a research and development program in support of single piloted cargo aircraft assisted with remote piloting and computer piloting. Review. The FAA, in consultation with NASA, shall conduct a review of FAA research and development activities in support of single piloted cargo aircraft assisted with remote piloting and computer piloting. Report. Not later than six months after the date of enactment of this act, the administrator shall transmit a report to the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology of the House of Representatives and the uh, Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation of the Senate that describes the program established under this subsection and the results of the review under this subsection. And that's it. That's the entire thing. So I, I think that the big takeaway here are two things. Number one is a program, a program in support of. That's fully funded in Section 703. It's not a study. NASA's already done 10 studies uh, for single piloted airliners, the last uh, one with results coming out last September. And uh, they, were, they were not good. I mean, the, the one talking point that I like the most is it significantly degraded safety uh, when you removed a pilot from the cockpit. But this is not a study. It's a program fully funded in Section 703. And the other takeaway is it's very open-ended. Uh, the only requirements are in six months for the FAA to uh, respond back to the, the House and the Senate and tell them what they're doing. So th this made it into the House FAA bill um, from the Science Committee under Title VII of uh, the Flight R&D Act. Uh, the important takeaway here is it wasn't debated. It didn't go through Transportation and Infrastructure, which is the uh, Committee of Jurisdiction. There was no, there was no debate. It was inserted and uh, not discussed. So Monday morning after we learned about this, uh, for the next eight or nine days, we worked on this, uh, a number of issues uh, to fight this. But the important one is that we, we got an amendment uh, from Congressman Cartwright to strike this from the bill. We removed 744 from the House uh, bill. And when it made it to the Rules Committee, it was ruled not in order. In other words, the Rules Committee decided that uh, they would not accept the amendment, uh, that it would not be debated on the House floor. And so we lost because of process. Uh, we didn't lose because of policy, uh, because again, the policy was never debated. So this past June, we had our annual legislative summit. And uh, there were a number of uh, issues discussed, but the main issue we discussed was this single piloted commercial cargo program. Uh, we had uh, a large number of pilots. We held 156 meetings on the Hill, uh, with this being the main issue. And uh, we, we met in the House uh, to continue to shore up opposition to this. And in the Senate, it was really more of an education process because the majority of the uh, Senate offices didn't even know this small paragraph was in the FAA bill, in, in the House version. Uh, and in fact, uh, when they found out about it, most offices were frankly surprised that anything like this would have ever made it. Uh, so the day that we, we stormed the Hill with all these meetings, uh, we uh, also had a public uh, relations push as well. Uh, Politico.com, uh, we took over that. So if, if you were on or near uh, Capitol Hill that day and clicked on Politico, you could not go to that website without seeing our banner, uh, Train for Life, with uh, all our talking points and uh, the discussion of Section 744. Also, all the House, office, uh, House and Senate office, uh, offices on the Hill that received the Washington Post had a beautiful wrap around it. Uh, David Weaver and his group uh, in comp did a great job. Uh, beautiful wrap, uh, really eye-catching uh, with all of our talking points on it. So every single office, uh, regardless of whether we had a meeting or not, uh, heard about Section 744 that day and uh, knew what, our, what our, our position was on the issue. So back in May, the Executive Council met, and this was one of our, what was one of the uh, main issues that they discussed and at length. And at the end, they decided to allocate significant resources to fight this issue. And following that, Captain Canole decided that uh, we should really get all the pilots together to fight this uh, together. So we formed the Alliance, the Alliance for Keeping Pilots in the Cockpit. And the Alliance consists of, uh, obviously, ALPA, uh, the Independent Pilots Association, the Allied Pilots Association, the NetJets uh, Association of Shared Aircraft uh, Pilots, Southwest Airline Pilots Association, and the Teamsters Local 12, 24, and 357. So what we have is over 100,000 pilots speaking in one voice. And what we're saying is this. We're all the same. It doesn't matter what's behind the cockpit door. We all fly the same airplanes. We fly in the same airspace, 
the same time, uh, into the, in and out of the same airports over the same neighborhoods. Uh, and the only way to do that is to do it with two well-trained, fully rested pilots in the cockpit. You know, as advocates on behalf of, of uh, our profession, I think it's really important to understand the perspective of all the stakeholders. And I think really most of the stakeholders are, are represented here today. We have, we have manufacturers present, we have um, operators, regulators, uh, we have legislators represented. But what about the general public? What do they think? So to that end, uh, I'd like to talk to about the um, public opinion poll that Captain Canole has mentioned. Uh, ALPA uh, commissioned this poll, and we decided to go with the, global, uh, the globally uh, respected firm of Ipsos uh, to conduct it. And what they did for us was they conducted, there we go, the, the poll was conducted over a six-day period uh, last month. It was a sample of over 1,100 people, adults, 18 or over, uh, in all 50 states, in English, and it was done online. And so we asked them a number of questions. First question was, which of the following modes of transportation have you used in the past or do you plan on using in the future? Well, to nobody's surprise, you know, transportation by road went out. Everybody travels by car and, and bus. But when asked to describe uh, what they felt was the safest mode of transportation, transportation by air, by 89%. So um, the next question, we wanted to uh, see how the, what the general public felt about uh, prioritizing the government budget. So if the government announced that a portion of the public resources were to be spent on te technology developments that would improve airline shipping and travel, how do you think the government should prior to prioritize this investment? 96% of uh, Americans feel like anything is better than spending money on reducing pilots from the cockpit. Uh, the top two, in, in improving uh, the screening process and air traffic control. Only 4% thought reducing pilots should be a priority. Next question was uh, on who should pay for it. If, if we decided that we did want to, to remove a pilot from the cockpit, who should pay for it? Overwhelmingly, uh, the public felt that airlines and industry should pay for it. 75% felt that the airlines, if they wanted to reduce uh, cockpit manning, the airlines should pay for it. Next, we wanted to get an idea of, of the general public's feeling about getting on a pilotless airplane. So we asked them, would you be comfortable getting on a pilotless airplane? I don't think it's a surprise to anybody here. 81% overwhelmingly felt it was a bad idea to get on a pilotless airplane. But we know that most Americans shop for their uh, airline tickets based on price, the lowest price. So we took that into account with the next question and asked them, if we could reduce the ticket cost, would you get on a pilotless airplane? And it really didn't change the answers. Between two-thirds and three-quarters of Americans still would not get on a pilotless airplane, regardless of how much you could reduce their ticket price. Our next question, we got right to the meat of it and asked them about Section 744. We told them that the, the Congress has pending legislation that would spend taxpayer dollars to help airlines eliminate a pilot from cargo airlines. And we gave an example of FedEx and UPS as a first step to removing all pilots from all airliners. Do you support this type of legislation? 70%. 70% said no, we don't support legislation that would remove piles from the cockpit. And so the next question ha uh, dealt, deals with uh, really what we deal with on a regular basis, on a day-to-day -day basis in the cockpit. The question was, when it comes to solving problems, troubleshooting systems issues, making split, decision, uh, split decisions during flight, which is something we do every leg, every flight, which of the following do you think is best suited to deal with, uh, with this in an emergency? Uh, remote piloting, onboard computers, a single pilot, or two pilots working together? Overwhelmingly, 80% of Americans felt that two pilots working together to solve a problem was the best choice uh, out of all. And since we were talking about uh, asking questions along the lines of automation, we wanted to ask uh, folks to uh, put modes of transportation. Which modes of transportation do you feel would be best suited for automation or uh, self-driving mode? 
and 92% uh, of Americans felt every other mode of transportation was a better choice than aviation. Only 8% felt like automated flight was the best choice. And then finally, we, we, uh, there's been talk on Capitol Hill of, of reducing pilot qualifications, reducing first officer qualifications, uh, reducing training and, and required uh, experience to, to fly an airliner. So we asked the general public, how do you feel about that? Should we reduce uh, first officer training and experience requirements? And 73% of Americans thought that was a bad idea. They want us to continue uh, with uh, good training and good experience for all pilots in the cockpit. So I, I, think the, um, I think the evidence is clear. The general public is on our side. We've got over 100,000 pilots that uh, are talking in, uh, together in one voice. And we believe that safety should be priority number one. And the only way to do that, as I said, is with two well-rested, well-trained pilots in the cockpit. So as Congress continues to debate the FAA bill, we'll continue uh, to advocate for keeping two pilots in the cockpit. So I, I know this is a lot of information uh, to, to really grasp in, in, in a short period of time, but uh, I'd like to open up for questions. Uh, Captain Canola, if you'd like to, to join me. All right, go ahead, Rip. What you got, sir? Um, who's behind this push to, uh, to do all this in secret and get this out there and uh, in front of the, uh, you know, in, in, in the dark, as it were? It's a good question. Um, so as I mentioned, it came from the uh, Science Committee. Uh, Lamar Smith uh, from Texas is the chairman of that committee. Uh, he is not seeking re-election. And when asked about it, he said that uh, he feels that the United States should be at the forefront of, of automation and AI technology. We need to be at the forefront. And you know, my response to that is, we don't disagree. Uh, ALPA historically has been uh, a big supporter of technology. If you look at uh, autopilots, auto throttles, uh, terrain collision avoidance, TCAS, TCAS uh, and uh, tra uh, excuse me, traffic collision avoidance. Uh, enhance uh, ground proximity warning. You name it, we've been in support of it because it's been enhancing safety. And it, as Captain Canole mentioned, th this in no way uh, enhances safety. And one, one additional thing I'll add to that, um, if you've been in aviation since the early 90s like me, you know that the FAA had dual mission until the late 90s. The FAA's mission was to promote safety and efficiency and to promote aviation as an industry. In the late 90s, the promotion of aviation as an industry was removed. The FAA has, with the exception of commercial space, has only one mission, and that's the safe, efficient operation of our airspace. That's it. No, not just the airspace, but all aviation, safe and efficient. So to my remarks earlier and to Bill's remarks, this is clearly an attempt to promote an element of aviation that we just don't believe is in the FAA's mission in any way, and it's improper. That's why it doesn't belong in this bill or any bill. Any other questions? Okay, so Bill will be around. We have oh, we got one more? No, you go ahead. I got time. I got time. Has anybody looked at the slightly less tangible uh, sort of psychological aspect of single pilot operations? And you're basically locking somebody in a small room for hours at a time with little to no inter human interaction, especially after you go to the, like, the CPDLC systems where you're not even talking to anybody on the radio. Yeah, so I'm not aware of any reports, but there are some of elements of having only one person in the cockpit that I think gives me, Bill, oh, yeah. the entire life's great pause if you think back to German wings, mm -hmm. yeah. right? This is not something our security system set up to do. Okay, there's two of us in there for more than safety reasons. We're in there for security reasons. Anything you want to add? You know, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any studies directly to your point, but um, one thing I like to explain to, to officers is this. Uh, after we go over the safety aspects, after we go over the security aspects, there's a physiological aspect. Okay, we, we, we're looking at this bill specifically to start in cargo. Okay, so let me ask you, at, at 11 p.m., go sit in your closet. Shut the lights off, put on some background noise, and sit there and, as you mentioned, possibly not talk to anybody uh, until 4 or 5 a.m. to where you have to be at 100%, be ready to go to shoot a Cat 3 approach down to, down to uh, minimums. 
and do it by yourself. Are you going to be alert? Are you going to be on? No, no. Uh, so it, it's, you know, it doesn't pass a sniff test, right? Any other questions for uh, Captain Secor? Okay, so uh, there's one more over there. Yep. Easy put his coat on for us. Wow. Wow, Mike, you're really dressing up for us, man. So, whose idea was this? <laughs> it's is this the gentleman whose name you, I I stay away from Washington as much as I can? Is he a senator or a congressman? Well, uh, the idea came up last Congress uh, a few years ago uh, okay. from Congressman Knight from California. Okay. Uh, he's how does how does he get here? He gets elected. No, no, no. How does he get here from California? <laughs> oh, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's the thing. Uh, when we talk to offices, other than Mr. Smith's office, uh, when we talk to offices ab about this bill, we hear, all, we hear the same thing. Why would anybody support this? This is a horrible idea. Who wants this? So I'm, they, I'm they, it's exactly to your point. They all fly. I'm just expecting them to be on the first flight without right. pilots. Right. So, hey, look, it, it, it's very difficult to make a business case for this, right? Okay, because you have to create a new fleet of aircraft or redesign the current fleet of aircraft to make this work, and that's a capital expenditure of very great extent. Um, for most airlines, uh, I'll give you the Delta statistic, pilot costs at Delta Airlines are 7% of all cost. So if you're looking to remove pilots from a Delta airliner, you're going at the 7%, okay? But in exchange for that, you're gonna spend billions on a new fleet of aircraft. Yeah. So we don't think there's a corporate business case, at least one we haven't seen, but they don't need one if they can get the government to do the research for them. See what I'm saying? And that's where we just object to the FAA or any bill actually having this in there. And to be clear, no one has fessed up to being behind this, so to speak. And we, we wanna really be um, clear that we're interested in who's behind this. And if, they, uh, if this is in the public domain and our, our Congress is going to act on it, we have a right to know who's asking for this. So we're not going to stop asking that question until we get a good answer. As somebody who's getting a little older, I'd, if they do go this way and we go down to one pilot, I'd really appreciate it if they put the bathroom on, on my side of the door. Okay. <laughs> yeah. As a younger guy, I'd appreciate that too. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a text question, and then we'll do you, Steve. So text question from the back, please. Hi, good morning. Uh, the question is uh, the status of this in Congress. Where are we at now with it, and what, what's going forward? OK, uh, good question. So it's in the House bill, right? Uh, we, we were unable to keep it out, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, the Senate bill hasn't been um, voted on yet. It's uh, currently not in the Senate bill. Uh, we have found no support for it in the Senate. So we're cautiously optimistic that it will be kept out of the Senate bill. And so if it is, our, our next uh, concern is when uh, they go to conference for reconciliation, when they take the House bill and the Senate bill, bring them together. And so if it's, it's obviously in the House, not in the Senate, it's going to be something that needs to be discussed and removed. So uh, if we do end up being able to keep it out of the Senate, that will be our next, uh, our next play. Steve. Gentlemen, has there been any outreach to any of the other alphabet groups that are out there, such as A4A or any other uh, groups that have been contacted to make comment uh, about this proposal to uh, the governmental bodies that are in question? Any that we're familiar with that have been providing input, or are we the only ones taking the lead on this? Well, we're clearly taking the lead, but we're working with every bit of the alphabet soup to find where our allies are in this. Um, there's a hesitation to engage on it, first off, because they understand how passionate we are on it, and if they go out against us, now we got a real problem, right? we got a real problem, because if you go against the Airline Pilots Association, you got a problem. you got a problem. So uh, I can't say who's committed to helping us yet, but we're working on all of them. Rich. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you've talked about the business case, the safety case. As, uh, as part of our position. How about the security or the cyber security position? Sure, I mean, that's, that's an issue that we bring up in every office. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously the DOD doesn't publish uh, the loss rate of, of uh, drones, but 
Uh, I, I think a, uh, a the satellite connection uh, for remote piloting uh, would be a huge concern. Um, not to mention uh, the German wings uh, incident or uh, just simply pilot incapacitation. So yeah, there there are a lot of uh, a lot of security a lot of security concerns that we get to after the safety that that uh, you know really opens eyes uh, when we when we talk about these different offices. And the cybersecurity aspect. Any connected aircraft has cybersecurity concerns, just plain and simple. And for all of us of airline pilots in the room. You don't get away with one hydraulic system. You don't get away with one generator. You don't even get away with one engine. You're going to have multiple redundant high bandwidth data links to do this if you're going to do it. Those are multiple pipes into the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And if it's an electronic single, it can be hacked. It can be hacked. So it's a con real concern for us, Rich, a real concern. Yeah. Thank you. Since I'm at the microphone, the other uh, entity that was mentioned in this bill was NASA. Have we approached them? I don't think we've gone to NASA quite yet. Uh, to, they're going to be uh, a government agency that's going to be sitting on the sideline on this mm -hmm. one, I can almost guarantee you. Uh, but we'll think about how we could go at them. You know, but I, I don't know officially what their position is, but I can tell you, know, I, I alluded to or mentioned it in uh, my remarks. Uh, they've done 10 studies over the last decade or so. Uh, you know, the last one came out in September uh, last year. And there were a lot of great sound bites. Uh, 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 regarding removing a pilot from the cockpit. But as I mentioned earlier, the, my favorite is, is significantly degrade safety. It basically said that um, on a blue sky day, one pilot could, could cope. He could get around to getting it done. But if you, t if you threw anything at him, any little non-normal issue, it went, down, it went downhill fast. It was not safe. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Our next guest is here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to move on. I promise I'll come find you, okay? Or Bill will come find you for the question. Thank you, Bill, for that briefing and leading ALPA's effort to defend. <laughs>